This is episode number 36 of Dev Branch Digital Spring Cleaning. I'm Jason Tucker. You can find me over at my website on jasontucker.blog. Say Reed is on assignment, so she won't be here this week. And you all know who it is. It's your boy, Jason Cosper, back at it again on the world's most influential WordPress podcast. Speaking of that podcast, find us wherever it is great podcasts can be found. Which is pretty much everywhere, except for Google. Yeah, <laughs> yeah not anymore. And come hang out with us in our Discord. You can go over to wpwatercoolerslack.lol and go take a look at that over there. We'd appreciate it. We've been having a lot of fun over in that Discord. Yeah, absolutely. Ah. It is. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, it it is uh, a lot of fun in the Discord. Sometimes uh, I will get uh, distracted and forget to log in, and then I'm like, "Holy crap!" Like I have so many messages to catch up on because uh, uh, folks are chatting over there. It's it's good vibes, uh, and and you know. Uh, it's a it's a passionate community but uh we're all kind of interested in in the same thing and uh, making wordpress better so if if that sounds like you yeah come hang out yep so, actually and speaking of that dot lol domain uh i i got that domain as a free domain registration for a year um which is which is why it is a, a dot lol it's it's the whimsical domain uh, but it's with a registrar that I don't use for anything else, which dovetails into spring cleaning because, uh, Tucker, you have been trying to consolidate, uh, yeah. a lot, yeah, a lot of what you're doing online, uh, and, uh, really like moving everything closer to maybe not all under one service, but just trying to like, okay, I, I know that I go here for domain registrations. This is where my hosting is, uh, et cetera, rather than having a bunch of stuff in a bunch of different places. Yeah. Yeah. This kind of started, um, this kind of started at work where I was doing a little bit of um, kind of figuring out where all those digital assets are and where the different contracts that we have. And like, we, we, we manage this more in like the accounting side, but on the IT side, it's like, Oh, you know, I need to schedule that SSL cert to be reinstalled on that, that one server. And, Oh, there's another SSL cert on this other server. It's a lot of SSL certs and yeah. on all different, on windows on mac on linux it's on everything it's on our you know wi-fi it's all over the place so mm -hmm. having those things i could have stuck them in a calendar and been like all right well here's calendar entries and uh, the calendar entries will tell me when to go do these things um right. but then you essentially have two calendar entries you have the calendar entry saying this is the last day that this needs to be done and the other one is going to be hey by the way that's probably a good day for you to get this done and so right. i I was like, I, I got to come up with like a, a better solution for this. I was, I've been looking at a bunch of different tools and also looking at using like um, Google Sheets and uh, Excel. And I have access to all the all the toys. So it's just like, you know, what am I going to do? Am I making a SharePoint site? Like, what am I doing here? Am I using a Google site? Am, right. I, am I using some, you know, SaaS solution that kind of does this stuff for me? Like, what's what's the best approach to it? And um, I found a couple of um, posts that people have kind of discussed these things, but these aren't things I want to share because they don't sound like they, they would work all that well for most people. It sounds like it worked really great for this one person. Um, but um, yeah, I've, I've looked at like Docker containers and all sorts of like different different solutions that people have kind of built out um, as a ways of, uh, of tracking this stuff. And um, I really came back down to just using the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> and just having essentially those two entries, but I have a whole calendar that I've set up. Like my life runs on calendars 
And for me, I have like a, I use Google for my, um, you know, email calendar solution. And yeah. so I'll have um, multiple calendars. And one of them is for, you know, all those SSL certs, other ones for all those domains and when they expire and, and stuff like that. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, that whole digital asset combining thing that you're talking about is the one of the things that I've been wanting to kind of figure out is, does this stuff need to continue to exist? Right. You know? Does this website need to exist still? Is this is this is this is this serving anything? Is this something that's gonna like help somebody out? Was it was it cool that I bought that domain name and I threw like. 20 posts on it and then it, it never do, didn't do anything. So it's, it's funny that you mentioned that uh, as well, because uh, our, our uh, mutual friend, Jeremy kitchen has been going through this as, as well. Uh, and uh, he hit me up the other day saying, Hey, I have websites that uh, WordPress websites that I have created uh, did exactly that, did five posts, did 20 posts, whatever. Uh, I'm no longer updating them. And I don't really want to keep updating a WordPress site for the rest of my life. Um, right. So uh, his idea was, he was like, at first I was going to convert it to some static site generator and then whatever. He's like, but I like my theme. I don't want to like mess with all that. Like I don't have the energy to do it. Like he's undergoing cancer treatment right now. So like he, he really is like, I, I don't. And he goes, is there a static uh, generator plugin like for WordPress? I'm sure that there is. Mm. Uh, he's like, I see a bunch of them. Um, but like, do you know any that are legit? And, uh, the two that I told them were like WP two static, which is, um, um, uh, Stratic. I want to say that got bought by yeah. Elementor. It was their plugin. It's still open source. It's still maintained. It's not as actively maintained as simply static. Uh, and mm. I'll make sure that both of those make it into the show notes. Um, uh, but they, um, both will generate, uh, in, in the case of, uh, simply static, they also have like a pro plugin that you can use to like automatically deploy your, you know, site to like, uh, uh, Netlify or any of those like, uh, places that will host static sites for you, like GitHub pages, et cetera, or, uh, I think the free version just outputs a zip file that you can upload somewhere. And he's like, uh, kitchen was like, that's my speed. Like, mm. let's just go ahead. And, uh, you know, he's like, I don't, I don't need to pay 99 bucks a year, or $59 or whatever to, to just do this the one time. So he, uh, I, I, I also just for a local dev environment, uh, he installed local, he moved both of his sites into local uh, and then, uh, he's like, so I still have a WordPress install, but it's not publicly accessible. I don't have to worry about maintaining it except if I need to generate a new version of the site, because it's like, oh, actually, you know what? I do want to add a post. Uh, right. and he's been taking, uh, some of his other sites and just turning some of his WordPress sites and just turning them into static sites throwing them up on Netlify, throwing them up on GitHub pages, and then mm -hmm. just kind of going, okay, like if I need to revisit this, I can, but otherwise, like I, I have a forever static site that I don't need to worry about uh, getting it hacked, getting it whatever. All um, right. And like, I, I was like, when he was doing that and with you doing this, uh, I kind of thought to myself like, oh crap, like I should go <laughs> through my sites and figure out which ones uh, are effectively in that static mode. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, and, and, and do the exact same thing. Use uh, local, uh, use some sort of uh, dev environment. I know that uh, automatic just put out uh, like studio for wordpress.com, a, a similar, uh, thing that's supposed to be like a, a local 
uh, competitor, uh, which local is a WP Engine product. Um, you know, there's there's a bunch of different things that you can do there. Um, you know, VVV is still a thing, I guess, uh, but who wants to mess with that? <laughs> Especially since uh, Vagrant is always figuring out a new way to fall over. Um, right. And that, so, that's, that's, that's my thing though, is, is the fact yeah. that maintaining this stuff, like if, yeah. uh, you know, uh, for the most part, I'm, tur- you know, we're, we're turning these websites into movable type sites and we're running, we're running a, a, a Perl script that's going to generate that, that static page. You know, it's like, you're still using the database, you know, you're still using a database to kind of like mm-hmm. hold this stuff. But pulling up that local site, hitting the go button, and having it spit out a uh, you know um, a, a static site, I think that's great. Right. You yeah. know, my my approach to it was I was thinking I was like, well, if I'm going to maintain a website, can it mm-hmm. just be one website, and all the things will go into that one website, and I'll just uh, I'll just have them as like categories or something? Like, is yeah. does that make sense? And and then I'm like, well, but does I don't know. I, I I don't think I have fans. <laughs> it's not like somebody's like, oh man, I'm waiting for that post to show up in, in my RSS feed, or I'm waiting for it to show up on some random social media network that Jason's going to post this to. Like, I don't think that's the case. I, I think this is very self um, self uh, serving in the way that sure. you know. I I I used to have a tagline that was like. Um, I you know I blog because I want to find it on Google later. You know, it's like. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna do a search for this like very uh esoteric thing and then you're gonna find it and you're like, oh yeah, I wrote that. I wrote that blog yep. post on that thing, and I'm just an idiot and can't remember that I did it. So um yeah, for me it's it's just what like what's the best solution for this? Is it to have you know those domain names still floating around? Because now I'm paying for domain names that I don't necessarily think are worth it anymore. Like I just let go one of like one of my oldest domain names that I've had. And I was like, you know, I'm never going to use this. I'm just going to let it, I'm just going to let it die. It's going to turn into some like, you know, crap ad domain. Cause no one's going to buy it. Cause it, it, it was cool at the time, but it's just not that cool anymore. And so right. I was just like, ah, I'm going to let this die. Um, I used to do a lot of Disney related stuff and I was like, ah, I don't go to Disneyland all that much anymore. I'm just going to dump all those domains. And so like all these domains, I'm just kind of like, you know what? Yeah, they're just going to go away. (laughs) Now that content that I wrote, is that content still worth it? And where should I put it? So for me, I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to throw it as a category. I'm going to put it on like my personal site and be done with it. But the problem is for me is my personal site's not currently on WordPress. So now I'm like, sure. oh gosh, do I really want to do like a merge? <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, am I going to take this other site and I'm going to turn it into whatever the hell it is that I'm using this week? Um, you know, like, I don't know. It, it's, is it worth it? I don't, I'm not entirely sure. So um, I, I'm still trying to decide what the appropriate approach is to that. But um, getting all this stuff and consolidating it, I think is worth it. I think also um, consolidating web hosts. If you have a bunch of different um, websites hosted on different web hosts, um, I think I at one point I had maybe seven different web hosts that I was paying for to kind of do all these different tests that I was doing. Yeah. But I'm like, I'm getting down to like, all right, I got the one web host now or two web hosts and, um, and that's it. And just kind of bring it all back to wh- where, you know, where I wanted it to be. Um, I will say, I will say uh, as a quick aside, um, I've been a customer of, of DreamHost, not an ad here, but I've been a customer of DreamHost since like the beginning. Right. <laughs> like I don't know. Like wh- when did you first start working over there? I, I know I started working there in 2006, and I think at that point they were nearing their 10th anniversary. Yeah. So I, I was trying to look up. I'll, I'll have to look up my account and see how long I've had it. But I've had it for a damn long ass time. But the yeah. problem was, is back in the day, you know, like that your the guy, their dashboard has changed over the years, and things have changed mm-hmm. over the years and stuff. And so I just had 
tons of domain names. Like all my domain names used to live on this on this thing. I I was um, I was a slum lord to myself. <laughs> I just had so many domains just running sure. on this poor one one poor website. Um, so I started moving a lot of my sites back to to uh, DreamHost just because it's like it's a shared hosting. I, like I said, I I'm not trying to look for like the um, uh, like ultra high performance, blah, blah, blah. I'm not spending $7,500 a month for, you know, for, for it. If I do, I could probably spin that, spin that up off of, um, you know, one of dream hosts solutions for that. But I just wanted having like that one company <laughs> to pay right, and just make sure all that stuff's there. Um, but also domain name consolidation, um, going through all of the different places that you're hosting your domain or your, you bought your domain names through and maybe take the time to go through and figure out where the heck should this stuff um, reside. Um, I was always of the mind that you should never, you should never have your domain names ho hosted at the same place that you're hosting your websites and they should just be on a registrar that's separate from everything else. Um, but I have seen, you know, we've seen this in the past where we're like, oh, let's start putting our stuff on Google domains. And then guess what happened to Google domains? You know, it's like, so now owned by Squarespace, right? Right. So now guess what? You're back onto some, some host that you're not even hosting your website on. You know, right. it, it was, it was just like, uh, well, hopefully you'll switch to Squarespace. I'm like, no, I'm just going to go switch all my stuff over to like Namecheap or something. I, I will say, uh, I have long subscribed to uh like okay i have uh a like before i worked uh for dream host and this is this is like the second time that I've, you're not going to say gandhi gandhi.net are you no 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 no, no. <laughs> okay I, I, uh i mean uh tucker you and i like we've been uh like interested in podcasts like since from the jump as well from the jump yeah and uh back in the day uh, a very popular domain registrar uh like a uh, podcast sponsor was hover.com um yeah. they used to re they used to sponsor like all of leo the port shows a, a bunch of the the kind of nerdier shows uh and they were uh, affordably priced i i think that there are people who are like undercutting them now uh but for the most part like uh, the majority of my domain names are are on Hover, but I will say, uh, working at DreamHost, like it's a it's a web host and it's a registrar, and you know there are other uh, added services. One benefit to having your domain registration where you host your site uh, is the fact that uh, if there is an update that needs to be made in a lot of cases those dns updates like say uh you know oh we had to do emergency maintenance or whatever uh, and we're very sorry but the ip address of your machine changed uh right. instead of having to go oh crap now i have to remember to go log into my registrar and change it like oh your host actually handled that for you mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a nice thing to have and for the handful of domains that like I have registered uh, in my hosting account at, at DreamHost, like um, I will say uh, it is nice to just never have to worry about that uh, and, and never have to like think uh, about like, okay, wait, where do I have? Cause now uh, especially since the the new kind of like novelty TLDs have come up, uh, mm -hmm. I've sort of uh, this this random registrar that I have this .lol domain at. Uh, I have a few other like random domains uh, that are over on Porkbun, which is a newer registrar. It's a little less expensive than Hover, uh, so like I. I have uh, over maybe the past like two or three years uh, started to like uh, in like you're kind of like pulling everything in like mm -hmm. I've expanded uh, like my footprint and uh, watching you do this watching uh, my friend kitchen like consolidate uh, all of his stuff into uh, you know, into what he's doing. Uh, it's very much like a, a thing where it's like, okay, 
I think I maybe need to uh, start like pulling everything uh, at this point, like I have so many domains over on hover. Like I, I just need to transfer, like, I don't care mm-hmm. uh, what uh, it's going to cost me to transfer it in. Even if pork bun is offering a, a domain and renewal at uh, $10 a year, but over on hover, it's like $20 a year. It's like just to have that all in one place, one login, uh what's what's the uh the business term that they always love using one throat to choke right (laughs) yeah i i know that it's like okay uh if i have a registration i go here if i have a hosting issue i go here Uh, right it's 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 a little more confusing for me because like as an employee of a web host i have like my own employee account but i don't like to host my websites where I work, and that's always been the case. So I maintain a hosting account elsewhere. I, I'll host like little one-off things, little kind of like, uh, you know, silly stuff where it's like, oh, okay, I can just spin this up real quick and not mess with it. But like, I have a, a hosting account. I use uh, Spin Up WP. Uh, and have probably like 15 sites, 10, 15 sites. Uh, and those are like my sites, like they are like the ones that that's, that's where, uh, the silly sites that, um, you know, I, I maybe get started on like my shared hosting account at work. Uh, it's like, oh, okay, I'm actually going to make this a serious thing. Like I promote it to the actual hosting. (laughs) So it's, it's, it's kind of like, uh, and, and you know, it's funny because when I went back to work at DreamHost a few years ago, people uh, were telling me like, "Oh man, I've had a DreamHost account forever because yeah. it's shared. It's shared hosting. You pay ten dollars a month for it." Mm-hmm. Uh, and and as somebody who uh, earns a living off of all of these people who are just like, "Oh, I still have my DreamHost account from like twenty years ago." Please keep paying my bills. <laughs> right. I, I, I like staying employed. Um, right. So, uh, you know, buy some more, like whatever. <laughs> uh, uh, hashtag not sponsored. Uh, <laughs> right, exactly. Um, but still, um, you know, there are a lot of people out there who just have a shared account that they, they kind of, uh, you know, do that stuff with. Uh, and I mean, it's not a, it's not a bad thing to have. Uh, right. like I'm sure that when you get stuff all consolidated, like no matter, uh, you know, where you wind up with everything, you'll probably end up keeping, uh, you know, your cheap, uh, you know, as long as it's under $10 a month, like a t- under $10 a month shared hosting account, like mm-hmm. as, as a, a web professional, it's always a nice thing to, to keep around. It's always, a, oh, yeah. a, yeah, uh, to just be like, oh, I, I have this like little proof of concept thing. Uh, I'm going to, you know, throw this together. A lot of times, uh, I'll admit this, even uh, as like a developer, uh, I, I don't really, uh, I was talking about uh, kitchen running, uh, my friend Jeremy, kitchen running uh, local, um, you know, and having like these local uh, dev environments, a, a lot of times I'll j- just throw a site up on a temporary domain, like live on the internet. Like, I don't care. Like it, right. it, is, it, it, here is a, a quick, cheap place, uh, that costs me not a lot of money. And, uh, I don't have to worry about if, uh, Docker needs an update. I don't need to worry about, uh, you know, any of this other stuff. I do have to worry about if I, if I'm keeping the plugins up to date, because this actually is like a live site. Um, so like, you know, if I haven't tucked it behind some sort of like login or, uh, locked it down to like, just be accessed by my IP or whatever. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's that's a little bit of a problem. Uh, I, I was gonna no, I I was gonna mention it. I didn't want to shame you. You said you came back to one of your shared accounts and found uh, a God. bunch of yeah. yeah yeah. I was gonna bring it up, but I didn't know how to approach it. Um, I we 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 don't 
we on this show do not censor ourselves when we talk about most things. Um, but I, I, you know, my, my friend works there. My friend's also on the show. It's fine. <laughs> so shared hosting. Uh, shared hosting is fun. Um, you you can be the um, you can be the bad neighbor which is someone uh-huh. who may have um, may have done something screwed up on their website. They maybe have an old version of some software that's running on there. Um, and then that version of software may get hacked. And then at that point, maybe things start getting in there. And if you at one point didn't really understand how uh, security works, sure. and you had everything running off of one user account in the shared host, um those different domain names can then um propagate through one another and then since that account that they've um that they've compromised has uh been compromised has access to everything else they're able to then go through all the different domains that are in there and start just you know throwing all of the different php files that can be used to you know um, circumvent, you know, and start doing bad things to your stuff. So that's kind of what happened to my account. I logged in, I, you know, it's like, it's like I, um, it's, it's like I went off to college and then I came back to mom's right. house and she hasn't touched anything in the room, but everything has like dust bunnies all over, you know, just has all sorts of stuff is just kind of like accumulated. She didn't actually go in the room. She was just like, Oh yeah, I won't touch any of your stuff. Uh, that's kind of what happened here, but we left a window open and the window had the breeze come through and it brought in leaves and it brought in all sorts of crap. And so, yeah, I logged into the account and I was like, wow, what the hell are all these PHP files that are everywhere? Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, file list.php, backdoor.php. <laughs> it's, like, it's, like it's like all the things. They're, they're not even like bothering to no. hide. No, they, they enumerated like every file that's in this whole thing. And it's just, you know, it's it's a bunch of just like, I don't know, memes, essentially. It's just it's a bunch of crap that I just I'd accumulated on various websites. And yeah, that's what ended up. Uh, that's what ended up happening is I got on there and I was just like, oh, wow. So um, I hit up the you know security folks over there and I was just like, hey, can you look at my account? Um I, I just looked it up on, on here. So my account was from uh 426 2006. So yeah, yeah I've, I've had that account for a long ass time. And so, um, but it has every domain name I, I've ever done with every version of everything that's on there. I mean, you know, before, before using DreamHost, I worked at a web host as well, um, mm-hmm. uh, a competitor as well. And so, you know it's not like i had like os commerce or like some like really old software right. running on there or anything but th- there was some stuff that was in there and i'm just like oh wow this is some really old you know uh single click install type crap that was just floating around in there that i needed to get rid of yeah so yeah um when you're doing this sort of thing that spring cleaning also turns into uh spring mitigation <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. It's you're doing spring cleaning and oh crap, is that black mold? I need to get a guy <laughs> out here uh with the mold testing kits and everything else. And yeah. and I, I might need to I might need to uh hire a crew to come in and like clean out this thing uh because I have just let this sit way too long. A couple yeah. tiles got knocked off the roof and uh, things have been leaking into like the sidewall in my house or whatever. Mm-hmm. And now I got black mold in there and you think you're doing a good thing by spring cleaning, but all of a sudden it's like, Oh, I'm like 20 grand in the hole. Right. <laughs> Metaphorically. <laughs> Metaphorically. Now what's funny about this whole thing is that one of these, one of these installs was um, it had um, infinite WP in there Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which was um uh, i don't even know how this works and nowadays um i I don't manage like a whole crap load of websites that i care about um but um infinite wp was that you know single solution that you would kind of go into like manage wp or one of those where it would control all those sites and keep everything up to date well i went to go i went in there and i was like oh i wonder if i can get in this i went to like infinite dot whatever the domain name is dot com uh, typed yeah. in username password, got into it. And um, I, I mean, I was smart enough to at least have like um, HTTP authentication enabled. But once I got past that, the, the whole the whole installation was broke. Like it was right. just busted. 
you know, wh whoever it was that got into the account probably just scooped up all of the uh, usernames and passwords or whatever it was to get into those other sites. Oh, but none buddy. of those sites work anymore because they, you know, <laughs> they've been moved around so many times and the username and passwords have changed so many times. Right. So um, all, all this to say that, you know, when you're going through something like this, you'll probably find that um, that that a lot of your stuff is going to be jacked up and that you you've neglected a lot of these websites and that yes. neglect um, is really like uh, it's really telling you, like, should you keep this domain? Should you keep this content that's in there? Should you move that content elsewhere? Um, yeah, like that sort of thing and figuring out, you know, does that have value still? Or is that a post that you could then move and maybe rewrite or freshen it up a little bit? So yeah. it can be something that could be be used. So I don't know. Yeah, looking through that stuff, um, doing that spring cleaning is, um, is well worth it. And um, also just, you know, taking that time to, if you're going to go through those posts, maybe look to see if you have um, old... Um, uh, old short codes that are floating around in there that are what we would call like naked short codes that just they mm -hmm. they aren't actually producing any content. Um, going through that and maybe cleaning some of that stuff up. And there's a bunch of tools to kind of do that sort of stuff, but um, I haven't gotten to that point yet. And yeah. some of my stuff isn't even hosted on WordPress anymore, so it's it's a little funky to just kind of figure it out. Um, right. It, if I if I do any consolidation like I was talking about. Um, I'm going to have to go back to WordPress, do the consolidation and then go move it off to the next, you know, I mean, that's, whatever, that's whatever the hell, that, you know, <laughs> that, that's, that's what I have. I, uh, I mean, y you and I have just kind of like personally, uh, texted about this. I am using, uh, WordPress to, uh, move. And I, I think we touched on it in a previous episode. Uh, my, uh, wife, uh, Sarah is using for her, uh, horror movie podcast, uh, signed up with, uh, anchor, which is now Spotify for podcasters or whatever. Uh, and, uh, she wanted to be able to like, uh, instead, like let's host it on, uh, our own site, like something we control, like, uh, she doesn't like the Spotify tools or anything else. Uh, and I, uh, was like, Oh, I've been playing with ghost. This seems like, uh, you know, a, a site for people who subscribe to things like, uh, a decent, like they have, uh, you know, uh, some stuff built in for, for podcasting. Um, and I was like, I, I found a theme I liked and everything else. Uh, but I could not, get the rss feed imported into ghost I, uh, so instead of spending some time like hacking a script together i was like and and this is something uh i know uh james in our discord uh uh like w one of my favorite sayings like the best thing about wordpress is you can build anything with wordpress the worst thing about wordpress is you can build anything with wordpress um well, that best slash worst thing uh, is that uh, I went ahead and uh, said, there's got to be something that will help me pull in an RSS feed to WordPress, uh, like a podcast RSS feed. Uh, and then uh, I will take that and use Ghost Makes, an export tool for WordPress. So I used, I used WordPress to, I spun up a site on a shared hosting account, used WordPress, uh, to pull all of that RSS feed data down, uh, then took, uh, and use the ghost export tool to send that out and up to ghost. Uh, and now every time they publish, we haven't like been able to take the wraps off the site yet, but it's very easy for me to, uh, you know, pull the almost like, it's like 75 or whatever episodes. Uh, anytime they publish a new episode, I just have to make a copy of that post, 
uh, in the ghost install instead of like, oh, I'm going to, you know, do all this again or whatever. So when the site's ready to launch, like it, it's good to go. But instead of like going through and like, oh, I got to uh, mess with this JSON, I got to, you know, pull down this RSS feed, do all that. Like I, I used WordPress for data liberation effectively. <laughs> Yeah, it's that um, it's that utility belt that you can just uh, yeah. you know the, tap into real quick and be like, all right, well, let me go grab this little thing here and I hook this here and I'm gonna move this over here and hook this up there and yeah, you strung together some stuff and now you just moved your site. <laughs> yeah, and uh, now uh, considering what we were talking about with uh, forgotten about installs and everything else. I absolutely need to make sure that that install that I, I put together, even though I have everything set to auto update is spun down now because I no longer need it. Right. Uh, and so, you know, doing a little bit of that spring cleaning myself, I, I want to loop back around. You were talking about setting something up for um, like your SSL uh, expiration. And I know uh, yeah. a lot of people, a lot of people nowadays, and uh, I mean, they absolutely should uh, lean on uh, Let's Encrypt. Uh, and Let's Encrypt uh, does auto renewal as long as the host has it configured appropriately and everything else. Uh, in your cases, like, uh, you know, IT, like you maybe don't have that luxury, like you're doing stuff in uh, Windows, you're doing stuff across a few different platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, I do know of a tool. Uh, it is uh, kind of like an uptime monitor it's an open source tool called uh uptime kuma uh i don't know if you've looked at that but i, I use i use the heck out of that <laughs> okay so since you already are using the heck out of that do you know that some of the newer versions of it have uh alerts set up that will let you know when your ssl certificate is getting close to expiring no but i did see on there that it did domains but it does so, SSL as well. Correct. Oh, okay. Yeah, I maintain um, at my work. I maintain uh, a Docker um, container that has that running in it. That has a whole bunch of our stuff that we're looking at. And then in my house, I also have that looking at you know all my different websites and whatnot, just to kind of make sure that things are going up and down. You know, staying up and down and doing all those sorts of things. So um, notifications for, you know, like you, it's kind of weird, but you, you, you end up with like a discord for like your house, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like right. just, just to have all your crap tell you, you know, something's broken or <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Um, th th there's a whole bunch of different notification systems to do that. But yeah, um, having that is um, that's, that's an important, important um, way of approaching it. Um, the host that I use, or rather the, the SSL um, provider that we use, um, also does that. Although, you know, it's in their best interest for me to uh, renew my uh, account with them. Um, mm -hmm. They do that as well. But I think the thing is, is being able to forecast it so you know what's, you know, what's coming up. And then you can also kind of figure out, like, am I going to be on vacation around this time or not? You know, how am I going to? Um, approach, you know, approach this kind of change or something like that. But yeah, Uptime Kuma, very, very nice. Yeah, it, it is. It is very handy uh, if you, uh, because it's an open source tool. Uh, it can, I mean, it's not as fiddly as some of the other stuff to, to set up, um, but I will say, uh, and uh, we've, uh, again, uh, you know, not, not sponsored, uh, but uh, Pika pods, uh, which um, I know you use for one of your ghost installs, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, they have kind of done a, a one click install for some of these like Docker containers uh, and, and they kind of handle uh, everything for you. Uh, I'll make sure that that makes it into the show notes as well. Uh, Pika pods uh, is uh, really good uh, and uh, can kind of, 
uh, you, you push a couple buttons, you, you know, dedicate the resources it needs. If you uh, under resource it or whatever, you're like, oh, I don't know how much RAM I need. Just pick the lowest RAM setting. And then when you try to save, it'll go, oh, you need at least this much RAM and storage. Um, like it, it will do its best to make sure that you're not like, uh, you know, deploying a crappy version of this for yourself or whatever. Uh, but having something like that, um, you know, having having a, a management interface like an infinite WP or manage WP, I know that uh, they're called solid now. They used to be iThemes, uh, but solid has a, what was it, solid central or something like that. Um, yeah, that that's on. Yeah, that sounds it, right. It it's, I mean, um, I I will say, um, I uh, got into using that for a second uh, when um, when it was uh, just iTheme Sync, uh, but Solid Central is uh, actually pretty decent uh, at just you want. Uh, I I mean, I, I have a few sites set up uh, on that, like on. Uh, one of their uh, legacy free plans or whatever. Uh, and even though I have auto updates enabled for like a number of plugins and themes and et cetera, uh, I, I, I really like to, you know, uh, uh, run on the edge and, and maybe screw up by having auto updates enabled. Uh, if, if we can only get that uh, update rollback, um, right. thrown in, thrown into, uh, they, they keep snatching it away from me. Like Lucy with the football, I get so excited about it. I, I wrote a blog post on the dream host blog, like six, five, it's going to happen. And then it didn't happen. Uh, oh, so pe people need to get out there and test that. Cause, uh, it, you know, if there's like a failed update rollback or whatever, but, uh, having, uh, you know, kind of high points for like spring cleaning, like consolidate your domains, right. Mm -hmm. Uh, consolidate your hosting, uh, having a, a separate for hosting and domains is advantageous, but if you're not dealing with a ton of sites, maybe having them all under one roof is not the worst thing. Right. Um, you know, there's, there's no need to make things more complicated on yourself. If DNS changes and then you're going to have to like run off and have your site down, especially if it's something that's like mission critical or whatever. Um, but and you uh, see okay. names when you can, <laughs> You see names when you can. However, uh, if you use a C name that if you don't like having www in front of your domain, uh, yeah, like you can't C name uh, just a raw domain name. So like wpwatercooler.com uh, can't be C named. You have to use an A record there, but www.wpwatercooler.com can use a, a C named DNS record. So, um, you know, like, yeah. uh, know, uh, you know, what you're doing there, um, getting something set up, um, you know, even if you're like, oh man, that's, that's a lot to unpack. Like, uh, you know, uh, say, say we have viewers out there who, oh man, I have like, uh, four different hosting accounts. I've, I've got domains, a, a bunch of different places, uh, you know, because, uh, dot coms were on sale over here and I, I just never, uh, you know, moved all my domains into like one registrar or whatever. Uh, and then domains were on sale over there and same thing. Uh, like, you know, if that's a lot to unpack, uh, at the very least, uh, having a tool like uh, like Solid Central, like Manage WP, uh, like Infinite WP, which is still out there, like plugging along. Uh, I think Mark Benzikin, uh, old friend of the show, Mark Benzikin is working over at Main WP now. Is that right? Um, mm. I, 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 th uh, I think. Have to wait till Christmas when he sends out the Christmas newsletter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but there are there are tools out there that will help you like manage your sites in like a, a central way uh, to know when there are updates. All of these will as uh, send night nightly emails to you and let you know, mm -hmm. hey, 
uh, you know, uh, WordPress core had an update, uh, you know, like six, five came out, uh, you know, when six, five, one comes out, if you have sites that, that haven't, uh, auto updated, you know, whenever, you know, two, three weeks when they finally get, uh, you know, that little, uh, first point release of, uh, six, five out, um, you know, like it, it'll, it'll let you know, it's like, Hey, uh, some of your sites already auto updated, but you've got these three or four sites and, uh, you know, Oh, now some of the, the 20 themes, wh whatever ones that you still manage to have install on your site, like those have updates too. And, the, and this plugin and et cetera, and getting those emails every night, every few nights, like when there's an actual update, it's nice to see, uh, like I'll, I, I know that like one of the last emails, uh, like times that I check email in the night, like that's when, uh, my solid central email shows up and I just, mm. <laughs> like, oh, uh, I'm good. yeah, as, as I'm like brushing my teeth, I, I really should probably stop looking at my phone as I'm brushing my teeth, but as I'm brushing <laughs> my teeth, I go, oh, okay, I've got updates. I mash the button you know, hit a couple other buttons and then it's like, Oh, all my WordPress sites are up to date. Like, cool. Um, yeah. and, and, but having that, having a tool like uptime Kuma that not only will tell you like when your SSL certificates are expiring, but like also, uh, having effectively like pingdom notifications for your site. And, uh, especially, uh, if, uh, one of these multiple web hosts that you have, uh, you know, is having like server problems or uh, whatever, being able to, okay, thank you for showing. Uh, yeah. I thought, I, thought I, would, I thought I would show. Yeah. So here's my, my, uh, my, my local one, but going here and looking at the notification type, yeah. you can, you can get notifications. You name the thing. You know, like I was right. saying, if you have a Discord that your house runs on, or if you use, um, you know, if you're if you're a little bit more fancy and you're using like PagerDuty, or um, I use PushBullet, um, so mm -hmm. there's like there's different there's different um, tools to kind of do that, but it'll, it'll monitor darn near everything. I mean, I have this I have this monitoring Docker containers that are running on a a laptop server in my house, you know, but right. it'll it'll monitor all sorts of stuff, you know. If, if you needed to do, you know, like I use radius at work, you know, I could be using that. Um, but it can, it can look at all sorts of stuff, including like actually looking at the website itself for, for changes. And mm -hmm. um, it does, it does so many things. And the one thing that Cosper was talking about right here was the sort of uh, certificate expiry notification. This one's super duper handy. And if you're someone who has your site locked down, cause you're using this for, um, you know, for like personal testing purposes, you could do that whole HTTP basic auth and it'll still be able to get past that and then run those tests. Um, right. so yeah, there's, there's a whole lot of stuff, being able to group them up, um, you know, based on different, uh, criteria that you're using and then, um, how you want that to be displayed. And then what's really nice about this is, you know, you could give this to your spouse and be like, yeah, this is the reason why the Plex server is down or whatever. But you can like load this right. up and be able to look and see like, you know, is my stuff up? Is my stuff down? And then what happened to it? So, yeah. you know, everyone has different ways of getting things that fall off the back of a truck. And um, if you can track <laughs> if you can track it, then that's that's a great way to be able to track it. So um, looking yeah. at that, th this might be a, this might be a good solution for you. And it's free. That's what's nice about it is it's free. And it is free. If you and if you want to pay a couple bucks, you can pay a couple bucks, and they'll they'll actually do notifications um, using their own system. And you, they have an app that you can actually run on your phone, and it'll mm -hmm. send you notifications that way. And you can act on those notifications um, from that too. So, and if if you want to if you want to pay uh, Pika Pods to do it, I I think it's it's only maybe like I, I it's not more than like two or three dollars a month. Yeah. To, uh, and and really, all it's doing is just uh, every uh, few minutes, uh, just checking your site, seeing if it's up. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, and then when it checks your site to see if it's up, seeing when the certificate expiration date is, and uh, oh hey, that's coming up. 
Um, so so yeah. like really, if you take anything away from this, if, if you're like, oh, this is a, a really big lift, uh, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to get to uh, consolidating my hosting, consolidating my domain registrations, uh, you know, moving all of this stuff like under one roof, uh, like at, at the very least, uh, if you can't like, you know, get everything uh, collected uh, for that stuff, at least take an inventory of what you have uh, because, and, and get it into uh, even, even if it's just a, a plain text list. So, you know, all of the or spreadsheet, what, whatever you're most comfortable with, but just know like what you have out there. Just, just take the a second to be like, okay, here's, all my domains, here's all my sites, like, uh, and, and go through and, and say like, Hey, what, what do I still need here? What can I do? Um, yeah. And then know. figure out your, your approach for consolidation. You know, are you going to yeah. throw it as a, as a post on one of your websites? Are you just going to dump it? Um, are you going to have some control, some consolidation website that's going to have all this crap on there? Um, like like yeah. Cosper was saying, if you're going to take the time to you know turn them into static sites, I mean that sounds great. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, being able to do all that. Uh, one thing we didn't touch on here, and and that and that that's this has always been an issue. Um, I think is this idea of having this like one site or this one place that's your lo like how you're storing that local site that you're going to be mm -hmm. like having to maintain and keeping that um, keeping that. Uh, up to date and also kind of moving it from computer to computer as you're like, you know, moving that, moving the sites around how, how should someone approach that? You know, um, that might be something we have to talk about at some point here with just like <laughs> backups, you know, and the different ways of, of backing up, not just your, your website, but also like your, de your development environment and any of those, um, any of those other types of environments uh, that might be something we should, we should definitely discuss at some point. Yeah, absolutely. But I feel like uh, we're, we're approaching the one hour mark. I feel like maybe we've uh, managed to, to go on long enough. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. We definitely, we definitely covered the heck out of this. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I always worry when we're, uh, we're we're down a co-host when uh say uh isn't isn't with us when she's got something going on or or whatever i'm like man how are we how are we gonna fill time but uh it it turns out that, very easy uh, yeah uh, we don't when, need say say who oh come on <laughs> we, we do need say <laughs> No, I think, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, my, my speaking part, uh, jumped by 700%. So that was, um, that was, uh, that was, that was good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, uh, just, uh, inside baseball, but, uh, Tucker, uh, has a thing that shows him like how much each one of us has, has spoken. And it's always funny because he has like the smallest slice of pie, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> right. but, yeah, I have a lot man. to say. I just don't know how to play jump rope, and um, and double dutch is very difficult. So you just, yeah, yeah. Just what, when do I jump it? in? When do I jump in? <laughs> and then how the hell do I get out? <laughs> oh, well, speaking yeah. of getting out, thank you very much for hanging out with us today. We really appreciate it. If you haven't done this yet, please do this. Go over to our website. Go over to the Discord and join our discord and come hang out with us. We've been getting some really great people coming in there and hanging out with us. And we're, we're not trying to sell you anything. It's so much fun to just kind of just hang out and actually talk about stuff, not just WordPress stuff, talk about life, talk about all the things that are going on with your business, with your personal, with your whatever. Um, come hang out. We would love to hang out with you and talk with you. And um, like I said, link, links are in the, the show notes down below as well as on the website. And while you're down there, leave us a comment. Talk to it is, you have a good one. It is, it is a legitimate water cooler. Bring yes. your own water. <laughs> bring your own water. It doesn't have to be water, but bring your own. And uh, yeah. there you go. Thanks all. You have a good one. Bye-bye. All right.
greatly appreciate it there. And um, come hang out with us in our Discord. You can go find that in the links down below. We'd really appreciate it. Talk to you all later. You have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.